All right guys, takedown on these are identical to any other M14 in the world. First of all, you always make sure it's clear the action. Check it, visual, yeah, I know this gun is safe. I've checked it over a multitude of times here before I even brought it out. But it never hurts to check anyway. You grab the bottom of the trigger guard. Yeah, pull that up like that. Pull the trigger group out, bang. Trigger group. I'm gonna do a little bit of, uh, very little bit of work on this uh, bolt just to clean it up on the uh, hammer and the sear just to clean it up just a wee bit. As you can see, I've hardly fired this gun at all, very little. I don't think I put 150 rounds through this gun yet. Um, the take up's not bad on it actually. And, um, I did a scale on it. It's exactly four. And a, it's exactly five and a quarter pounds, which isn't too bad. Uh, there's no over travel in this gun. It's just a straight single pull, tiny little bit, about a sixteenth of take up, and bang. So what I'll do is I'll just get in under there with a stone and just do a tiny, tiny, tiny polish on it. I will not take any metal off. I will only polish, and probably a tiny, tiny little bit right under there, if you can see that right in there. And that'll be the extent of the trigger job. This do this gun doesn't need much. And then we just pull at the back, bring it out. There's your stock. We'll be doing a full bedding job along here. You can see where the where the um, where it's making contact. That's exactly where we're going to do a trigger job or a bedding job. We'll relieve this. We'll fill it full of bedding material. We're going to fill the back of this. I don't like the fact that that's empty and hollow because there's a lot of recoil that comes back and hammers right in this area so this is all going to be built up with resin you can see they've done a tiny little bit of uh, resin in there on something <clears throat> so we'll clean all this up <clears throat> bed it free float the barrel we'll make sure that there's a little bit of upward pressure so that's actually the barrel wants to tilt slightly upward there should be a little bit of upward pressure on the barrel if it's bedded properly so that you actually take the barrel and push it down that there's a little bit of give at the end a little bit of give at the end of that barrel that's a proper bedding job that's my understanding of reading all the literature <clears throat> so we just take the pressure off of that pull that lever out bang the recoil spring pull it out now this one is a bit of a bear to Fix that, get out. I had a heck of a time pulling it apart to clean it out, so <coughs> I'm just going to go ahead and shut the camera off so we can get in there and pull it out. This is your gas. Your gas tube is down here. I may send it away, send this away for unitizing. I'm not sure yet if I'll do that. We'll we'll get it together. We'll see how it shoots after it's bedded, and then we'll make that decision after that. So more later, guys. Okay, so to pull the bolt out, guys, you just bring it back towards you, and on the charging handle. Pull up and out. That will free the bolt to just lift up and out. There's your bolt and there's your charging handle. And right now that's to about the extent that we're going to need to uh, strip this puppy down. We can pull off the, uh, we'll need to get a screwdriver just to pop in there real quickly to get that out. Go. Sometimes it's just easier just to get a pick in that little hoop right there and kick it right out. And as you can see, that's considerably easier. Bang, there's your basically your stripped. M305. Now there's no need to take this, the uh, rear sight apart, but I will remove the gas plug and the end of the tube there, the crescent wrench. Now the problem with this Chinese stuff is, is that China tends to like to use their own, their own um, idea of what pitches and thread cuts, thread counts should be. 
So unless it's changed, and some, if someone knows more than I do about it, which you know I know there's a lot of people that know more things about things than I do, uh, most of your USGI equipment will not work on these. I know the thread, the um, flash suppressor, the thread uh, pitch is different than on a USGI mount, so they don't match up. And uh, I've also noticed that um, if you want to take these off, keep in mind that you're going to have to heat this portion up because they use silver, they have a drop of silver solder in there. And these are actually soldered on. So I'm going to probably run a shim through there, make sure everything's all nice and straight. And uh, we'll take this all out. We'll take the front side off. We'll take the rear side apart when we go to bead blast it to uh, clean it up. But as it stands right now, that's about it. And especially if you want to take the gas system off and shim it if you figure, if you feel it needs to be shimmed for any reason. If it's coming not tight, this seems to be pretty good. I'm not going to touch it until I absolutely have to. You will have to heat this up and pull it off. So that will be sent out. If I have to end up doing this, I'll, uh, I'll send it out and have that done before I bead blast it and get it cleaned up. So right now it's just going to be the trigger job and the bedding job. So uh, more later when we get that trigger assembly disassembled, guys. Hey guys, quick word about the receiver. The barrel on these uh, Chinese uh, M305s are uh, chrome lined. It's a chrome lined barrel. They're a fairly sturdy barrel. And the receivers, uh, the big knock about these when they first came into the state, especially in the states, was these receivers were soft and they tended to distort after uh, they heated up and you put quite a few, you know, up to five, you know, as little as two or three hundred rounds, the receiver was stored, was distorted and was actually uh, expanding considerably. Now the Chinese uh, got their stuff together on these. Uh, these are very, you know, I don't know the actual Rockwell hardness, but uh, going, reading online that the Chinese have that all sorted out. These bolts are as hard as a GS, USGI scope, um, bolt, maybe not as well finished, maybe not quite as precise. But they are the hardness uh, factor and issues have been have been worked out, and uh, I will put this gun up against any uh, Springfield Armories rifle. Um, my other one will outshoot my but my friend's uh, Springfield. It's uh, it's not a, his his is not a match rifle, but my five hundred dollar Chinese M three hundred five will outshoot his eighteen hundred dollar Springfield day in day out, and it's never missed a beat and it's never been out of action. So. Yes, I'd like to have a made in the USA high quality rifle, but it's just simply not available to me. So I have to settle with the Chinese specials. I don't like buying Chinese, but this is the only <coughs> non-restricted 308 battle rifle that is currently available right now in Canada. Now, I know Caltech's bringing in their bullpup, which I will definitely get, but you're looking at three to <coughs> five times the price. Um, I believe they're about $2,500, they're fi these are $500. Now you put another 500 worth of work into it, you've got a damn fine rifle. So I'm going to stick with these for a while until I see how those Polytechs work out, or sorry, the Caltechs work out, and then we'll probably be selling one of these M305s and going with that. But right now, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I came back from holidays sick as hell. Uh, double eye infection and uh, pneumonia, so I'm just getting over that now. So in uh, in, pa in uh, closing, don't be worried about hearing about the M305 bolts and receivers being soft. These are as hard as a Springfield, and they will last just fine. All right, guys, more as we proceed. Thanks. Hey, guys. All right, now, I'm not a gunsmith. I don't pretend to be a gunsmith. So I'm not going to show you what I did to this. Um, actually, I sent it out to a gunsmith to do. I don't want any problems with unintended firings. I don't want this thing to have any problems with slam fires. So I sent this this um, trigger group out to a gunsmith. It's exactly five pounds let off every single time. Five pounds was as low as he felt comfortable getting it down to. I'm not going to show you what he did. I'm not going to tell you how he did it because I don't want somebody going in with a Dremel tool and cutting things off and having the rifle go full auto on them. I don't want that responsibility on me. So I'm just going to say send it to a reputable gunsmith. I'm not going to recommend anybody. My guy is way too busy. He said don't mention my name. Just have tell people to have a gunsmith do these trigger groups. They are simple. It was very it was not difficult what he did, but the simple fact of the matter is it's a cover your ass situation. You go out and do this, it goes full auto on you. It blows up. It's on your shoulders. You have a gunsmith do it, a reputable dealer that does it, then you're up 
may not be completely off the hook, but you've got someone to share the, oh crap, it went kaboom, kaboom on me. So send it off. Um, do your research, have a Smith do it. I don't recommend trigger jobs for the average Joe, unless you've got lots of time down on the gun bench. Send it out, have the trigger job done, and you will be happy like I am with this one. Five pounds, nice and crisp, super clean trigger. This gun's gonna shoot. Later, guys. Okay, guys, another little tidbit about the bolt. That's the end of the firing pin right there. Keep in mind, that on the M14s and the M305s there is no spring in these so if you get it going fast enough and the inertia starts hammering it you could get a slam fire so that's why it's very very important to use mil spec primers either in uh, um, surplus 308 or a hardened primer or a harder primer if you're hand loading so that means no federal primers in these things because they're fairly soft and they're extremely sensitive so CCI CCI primers or Winchester primers, please. Um, you don't want any kabooms. You don't want these things going off prematurely. I've actually fired one uh, that was double that was charged with uh, W231, and it went kaboom. That's quite a few years ago. Blew the barrel out, uh, blew the bolt up. Thankfully, I only got a little bit of damage in, on my uh, on my left hand. My face was good because I was wearing shooting glasses, and I was just plain lucky. So, <clears throat> moral of the story is, use good primers and keep in mind that this is a free-floating fire pin, guys.